The hope that marked the birth of South Sudan two years ago has been swept away in the space of a fortnight. These people are among the 60,000 who've sought refuge at United Nations compounds in different parts of the country since the fighting started on December the 15th. Everywhere there's fight. In the whole country, not even in the, in the capital city of Juba. Even outside those provinces, the fight continued till now. And the government has nothing to do with to stop war. With more than 120,000 people in South Sudan forced to flee their homes this month, the humanitarian needs are growing daily. We are worried as usual in this condition. The cholera is the first thing. And uh, we are lucky because we are in the city, but we can help all the other transmissible diseases. We can have a measles outbreak, we can have a meningitis. There's talk of a ceasefire and the government says it's ready to end the fighting that has already caused so much suffering. Our government has positively responded to the demands of the international community and a guard in particular. But the man leading the rebellion, Riyak Mashar, has struck a much more cautious note. He says there must be proper negotiation and his political allies who are in government detention must all be released. I love my country. I love South Sudan. Ceasefires are negotiated by two delegations and then mechanisms for monitoring the ceasefires are put in place so that the ceasefire becomes a credible ceasefire. East African leaders have been applying diplomatic pressure. They say that if there's no ceasefire within four days, further measures will be considered. More UN peacekeepers and police have begun arriving. Everyone fears that South Sudan is on the brink of a much greater disaster. Peter Biles, BBC News, Johannesburg.